Hello everyone! How are you today? I hope everybody is fine and safe. And welcome to our science class. Again, I am your teacher, Jem Raymond. And for this week, we are now on our week 5 to week 6 lessons. And starting this week also, we will start exploring the world of astronomy. And we will start about the rotation and the revolution of our very own planet Earth. And our objective for this week is to differentiate between rotation and revolution and describe the effects of Earth's motion. Now, are you familiar with this class? Can you identify the name of this toy? Yes, very good. This is a fidget spinner. How about this? Yes, obviously this is a toy train with a Lego at the center. Very good. Now, by the way, class, I got these illustrations from the internet. Now, I know that there are lots of resources from the internet, but take note of this. You have to select good and educational information from valid and reliable sources even in the internet. Now, if you decide to use anything, you know, for example, in the internet, like videos and pictures, don't forget to cite the author or the sources of that particular digital information you use. As you notice in here, class, I indicate the sources or the references where I got these illustrations. I hope you will follow the same, especially when you are deciding to use some illustrations or pictures from the internet in submitting your output. Now, have you tried playing a fidget spinner class? Just like you see here on the screen? Now, how about this class? Have you tried playing this toy? Now, while playing this toys class, what have you observed? Yes, very good. They are moving. And what kind of movement do you see? Yes, you're right. Also, circular movements. Now, can you identify the center of the movement class? Now, let's start with the fidget spinner. Where is the center of the movement in the fidget spinner? Can you point it out? Yes, very good. This is the center of the movement of the fidget spinner. How about this toy train? Yes, very good. This is the center of the movement of the toy train. Now, how is the movement of the fidget spinner differ in the movement of the train around an interlocking track? Yes, very good. The fidget spinner spins or moves around the center. And this is the center of our fidget spinner here. And how about the toy train? Yes, the toy train moves around another object, which is this one. This is the center of the movement of the toy train. And this toy train spins around this object. Got it? Very good. Now, how will you compare the movements of this toy's class to that of the Earth's movement? If you are to compare it with that of our planet Earth, their movement specifically, how will you do it? Or how will you compare it? Yes, very good. The movement of our fidget spinner here is like the Earth's rotation. Very good. How about our toy train here? Yes, the movement of our toy train here can be compared to the movement of our Earth, particularly the Earth's revolution around the Sun. Very good. Now, would you like to know more about Earth's rotation and revolution class? And our lesson for this week? is to differentiate between rotation and revolution and describe the effects of the Earth's motion. Are you excited to learn our new lessons for this week? Have you ever wondered, class, why there is day and night time? 
Bakit kaya nakaka-experience tayo ng araw at gabi? For us to answer that question class, let us perform this activity first. Now, I want you to get a globe. If this is not available in your house, then you can use a ball instead. And then, after that, please get also a flashlight. So, please get these materials now. If these materials are not available at home, then just observe our presentations here on screen so that you can follow. Okay? But then, I encourage you, if these materials are available at home, then try to perform this activity so that you would know why there is daytime and nighttime that we experience here on earth. Now, do you have your materials with you now? Now, this time, place the globe or the ball on the table. Do it now. And after that, mark off the Philippines with tape. Okay, locate the Philippines in the map and mark off with a tape, just like you see here on the screen. Now, if you are using a ball, then you can put the mark in any parts of the ball. Do it now. Are you done? Very good. And after that, hold the flashlight at one meter distance from the globe or your ball. Just like you see here on the screen. And after that, if possible, please darken the room or the place where you are now. Make sure na parang madilim no? yung lugar na kung saan ka nandyan. Pwede patayin mo yung ilaw na nasa paligid or takpan mo yung mga bintana mo or yung pintuan mo, isara mo muna para medyo madilim yung paligid before you continue our activity. After you darken the room, turn on the flashlight and ask a friend or any family members to turn the globe slowly. Or you may spin the ball slowly between your fingertips. And then observe as the part of the ball or the globe goes into the light and the other parts that move out. Did the whole parts of the globe or ball receive light from the flashlight? Lahat ba ng parts ng globe or bola na sisinagan ba ng araw? What is your observation? Please take note of that, okay? When the other part receives light, what happens to the other parts of the globe or the ball? Yes, very good. When the other part receives the light from the flashlight, the other part of the globe or the ball is dark. Now, if the Philippines is facing the light source, for example, what do you think are the countries on the side opposite of the light source? Now, kung Pilipinas class nakaka-receive ng light from the flashlight, now just like you see here on the screen, what do you think are the countries na nasa opposite side ng globe wherein hindi sila nasisinaga ng araw? Can you name the countries? Yes, very good. The United States of the America, specifically the North America, and of course, the Canada. Let's have your activity number two. But this time, you asked a family member to help you with this activity. Now, this activity will show us how the earth rotates and revolves. And you will act as the earth, of course. And your family member will act as the sun. Again, in this activity, you will represent the earth. And your family member or your friend will represent the sun. Ikaw yung earth, yung family member mo, or your friend will act as the sun. Okay, ready? Now, you draw a circle on the ground. 
Gumuhit ka ng isang malaking bilog sa sahig. You can use chalk if you want. Are you done? Good. Now, your family member or your friend will act as the sun and he or she will stand at the center of the circle. Just like you see here on the screen. Okay? Next. And of course, you will act as the earth. And you will stand at the circumference of the circle. Ito ka. Are you following? That's very good. You as the earth will walk around the circle or the orbit around your family member or your friend that acts as the sun. Just like you see here on the screen. Try to observe. Okay, you walk around the circle just like you see here on the screen. I hope you are following the activity. Yawn. Are you done? Now, so can you rotate and revolve and at the same time? Yes, you can do it. But, you have to be careful, okay? You walk slowly and while walking, you also rotate. And, while you are rotating, you also moving around the circle. Okay? Again, do it carefully. Do it slowly, okay? Okay, do it now. Now, when you rotate and you revolve and at the same time, then you are also doing what you see here on the screen. Now, let's discuss first the activity one you've done earlier. What does the globe or the ball represent in your first activity? What do you think? Yes, you're right. The ball or the globe represents our very own planet Earth. How about the flashlight? What does this flashlight represent? Good job! The flashlight represents our sun. Now, what have you observed, class, on the globe or the ball when you span it while it is placed in front of the flashlight. Ano yung na-observe mo, class, habang umiikot yung globe o yung bola at nakaharap ito sa flashlight? Very good observation. The light from the flashlight shines to only one side of the globe or the ball. Yung isang side lang ng globe or ng bola ang natatamaan ng ilaw from the flashlight. Now, what does this indicate, class? Ano kayang ibig sabihin nito? Aha? Uh -huh. Very good! Now, this indicates that the places located on this side of the globe will experience daytime. Yung part ng globe na to class na nakaka-receive ng ilaw from the flashlight ang makaka-experience ng araw or daytime. But how about the part where no light received from the flashlight? Ano yung may experience ng part ng globe na hindi nakaka-receive ng ilaw from the flashlight? What do you think? Very good class, the places located on the side of the globe will experience night time because there is no light received from the flashlight. What is being described in this activity class? Ano kaya ang inilalarawan ng ginawa nating activity? What do you think? Any idea? Yes, very good! Activity 1 represents the rotation of the Earth. Our flashlight represents the Sun, and here's the Sun. And our globe 
or the ball you use represents our own planet Earth. Now, the light from the sun is received only on one part or one side of the Earth. And that side wherein it receives sunlight will experience daytime. And the other part of the Earth, which is this one, will not receive sunlight, right? And this side will experience nighttime. Now, by the way, what do we mean by Earth's rotation? How will you define rotation? Anybody? Yes, you're correct. Rotation is the movement of the Earth on its axis. What you see here on the screen represents the Earth's axis. The Earth's axis is just an imaginary line that goes from the North Pole through the Earth's center and to the South Pole. And of course, as you notice, Earth's axis is tilted. We've discussed this last time, right? Now, how does Earth rotate? Paano umiikot ang mundo? In what direction does the Earth rotate? Yes! Very good! The Earth rotates from west to east direction. Or, we can also say that Earth rotates in counterclockwise direction. Based in our activity, what? cause Earth's rotation. Ano yung mga pwedeng epekto ng pag-ikot ng mundo or ng Earth's rotation? Yes! Very good! You really understood your activity. The Earth's rotation causes day and night. Ang pag-ikot ng mundo class sa kanyang sariling access ang naging dahilan kung bakit nakakaranas tayo ng gabi at araw. How many hours Earth takes to complete one rotation? Ilang oras class para makompleto ng Earth ang isang buong ikot? Okay, very good! It takes about 24 hours or one day for Earth to make one complete rotation. Again, 24 hours o isang araw ang equivalent ng isang buong rotation or pag-ikot ng mundo sa kanyang sariling access. Isang rotation, isang buong araw yan. Now, let's have your second activity that you've done a while ago. What do you think this activity 2 describes? Ano kayang inilalarawan ng pangalawang activity na ginawa natin kanina? Any idea? Very good! Our activity 2 describes the revolution of the Earth around the Sun. Now, how do you describe Earth's revolution? Yes, very good. Revolution is the movement of the Earth around the Sun. As you see here on the screen, ito yung pag-ikot ng mundo sa araw. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng revolution. Now, how does Earth revolves around the Sun? What is the direction of the movement of the Earth around the Sun? Yes, you're right. The Earth revolves around the Sun in a counterclockwise direction. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng counterclockwise class? Now, nakikita niyo ba yung pag-ikot, ang direksyon ng pag-ikot ng orasan or ng rilo ninyo sa bahay? Yan yung clockwise class kung paano umiikot yung kamay ng orasan, that's clockwise. Pero yung counterclockwise, kabaliktaran ng pag-ikot ng relo or watch, that's counterclockwise. 
Counterclockwise is the direction of the Earth's revolution or the direction of the movement of the Earth while it revolves around the Sun. Now, Earth travels around the Sun in a path or orbit, right? Now, what do you mean by orbit? Any idea? Yes, yung nakikita nyo ngayon class na uh, puting path no, na dinadaanan ng Earth dyan ay tinatawag nating orbit. Pero ano nga yung ibig sabihin ng orbit? Yes, orbit is an imaginary path around the sun. Particularly, yung dinadaanan ng Earth habang umiikot ito sa sun. Now, how do you describe the Earth's orbit? Is it perfect circle in shape? What do you think? No, Earth's orbit class is not circular or not circle in shape, but it is elliptical in shape. Now, what happens if the Earth's orbit is elliptical? Kung hindi siya perfect na circle yung path na dinadaana ng Earth while it revolves around the sun. Anong ibig sabihin kapag elliptical? What do we mean by elliptical? Earth's elliptical orbit is the reason why sometimes the Earth is far or close to the sun. Just like you see here on the screen class. In this point, this is the point wherein the Earth is closest to the sun, about 147 million kilometers only. But when the Earth goes on this side, this is the point wherein the Earth is farthest from the sun. It is about 152 million kilometers away from the sun. Now, what do you call when the Earth is nearest the sun at the point during its revolution. This one. What do you call this point class wherein Earth is the nearest to the sun? What? Yes, at this point, Earth is at perihelion. Ang tawag natin kapag malapit ang mundo sa araw ay perihelion. Now, how about when the Earth is farthest from the Sun during its revolution? Ito, ano namang tawag sa part na to? Wherein, yung point na to ay pinakamalayo ang Earth sa Sun. Anong tawag sa point na to? Very good, it's aphelion. When the Earth reaches the farthest point in its orbit while revolving around the sun, it is called aphelion. Now, how many days do you think Earth will take to complete one revolution around the sun? How many days? Ilang araw para makompleto ng mundo, ng Earth, ang isang pag-ikot sa araw. Good job! takes the Earth a year or 365 and one-fourth days to revolve around the sun. Ang isang pag-ikot ng mundo sa araw ay equivalent niyan ay isang buong taon or 365 and one-fourth days. Paano nangyari, sir, na 365 and one-fourth days wherein yung isang taon natin, sir, is only 365? Anong ibig sabihin ng one-fourth dito? Now, as we all know that we are using Gregorian calendar wherein there is only 365 days in a year, right? Now, what do you think is used to compensate for the excess time Keep the calendar in sync with the revolution of the Earth. Para magkapareho ang ating isang buong taon sa revolution ng Earth around the Sun, 
ano ang ginawa natin para maging magkatulad dito? Very good. As I said, that once every four years, there is what we call leap year. We're in that leap year has 29 days for the month of February. Once there is leap year, meaning to say, there will be 366 days in one year. In a regular year, based in our Gregorian calendar, we have only 365 days. Right? Pero kapag leap year, 366 days na ang isang buong taon. Now, for you to understand it better, let me present this to you so that you could understand this what we call leap year. Now, for example, this year is 2021. And 2021, if you notice in our calendar, we only have 28 days for the month of February, right? So meaning for this year, we only have 365 days, right? But take note, according to our astronomers, one complete revolution of the earth around the sun is 365 and one-fourth days. So, dapat may one-fourth days yan kung i-compare natin yan sa revolution. Pero, set aside na muna natin yung uh, one-fourth days na yan. We will continue this uh, presentation first. What do you think for next year? How many days will it be in one year for the year 2022? Yes, still 365 days. Correct. Next. How about for the year 2023? How many days do you think is equivalent for one year? Yes, 365 days. Now, for the fourth year, which is 2024, what do you think would be the number of days for this year? Yes, very good. There will be 366 days. And what do we mean by that? Yes, because 2024, the year 2024, will be a leap year. Meaning, this year 2024 will have 29 days for the month of February. And all in all, we will be having 366 days days for that year and what will we do for the one fourth day now let me show this to you if we are to compare our year to that of the revolution of the earth around the sun as we all know we have 365 and one fourth days for 2021 right and of course expect also for the year 2022 may one fourth din yan and also my one fourth then for 2023. And of course, my one fourth then for 2024. Then what do we do so that this one fourth day will be accumulated in one particular year only? Yes, we add. Yes. So we add the one fourth for 2021, one fourth for 2022, one fourth for 2023, and one fourth for 2024. And that means 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is equal to 4 fourth, correct? And 4 fourths is equal to 1, right? So this one day, no, which is accumulated from the 1 fourth every year, no, from 2021 to 2024, will be equivalent to 1. So instead of 365, 1 here will be added to 2024. That's why we have 366 days for year 2024. Again, leap year will only happen once every 4 years. After 2024, what do you think will be the next year for leap year? Of course, 2025 will not be a leap year. The cycle will repeat for 2025. So simply, you just add four years here. If you want to know the next year for leap year, then 
you just add 2024 plus 4. Then you'll get the next leap year from this year. So meaning, after 2024, the next leap year would be 2028. The year 2028. Got it? I hope you've already understood what this leap year all about. So here are the list of some of our leap years. So we are now on the year 2021. So 2020 is leap year. So that's why 2021 this year is not a leap year. So the next leap year would be 2024. Next is 2028. Next is 2032 and so on and so forth. Understood? Okay, by the way, what is the effect of Earth's revolution? What do you think? Ano kaya yung epekto ng pag-ikot ng mundo sa araw? Yes, very good. The Earth's revolution causes seasons on Earth. The Earth's revolution causes different seasons throughout the year on Earth. But why there are four seasons in other countries and only two seasons in the Philippines? I've already told you why is that so. Last time, right? Now aside from the Earth's revolution class, the Earth's Tilting access causes the four seasons in some of the parts of the Earth. And, as we all know, as we discussed last time, Earth is tilted 23.50 degrees in its axis. So, different parts of the Earth receive different amounts of light in a different parts of the year because of the tilting of the Earth's axis and of course the revolution of the Earth around the Sun. Now, how will you describe the seasons in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere? This part of the Earth class is what we call the Northern Hemisphere. And of course, this part is the Southern part of the Earth or we call it Southern Hemisphere. Now, the northern and southern hemisphere experience different seasons and not the same time. Yung seasons na ma-experience ng northern hemisphere ay iba sa season na ma-experience ng southern hemisphere. Specifically, the middle latitude of that particular hemisphere. Now, summer begins in the Northern Hemisphere on June 21 or 22. During this time class, the North Pole is tilted to its full towards the sun as you see here on the screen. Now, this is also called summer solstice. What is summer solstice? When we talk about summer solstice, this happens when the tilt or the slant of the Earth's axis reaches to its maximum and minimum angles relative to the Sun. And that's why the seasons, particularly the middle latitude of the Southern Hemisphere here, is winter because this part receives less sunlight. During summer solstice class, the northern hemisphere, this part, experiences its longest daytime period. Nakakaranas tayo ng pinakamahabang araw kapag summer solstice. At ito'y nangyayari kapag yung northern hemisphere or the north pole reaches to its maximum angle relative to the sun. And at the same time, the southern hemisphere experiences the shortest daytime. Since winter dito sa southern hemisphere, makaka-experience sila ng pinakamaikling araw or 
daytime. You see, because the Earth's axis is tilted, the seasons here in the Northern Hemisphere is totally opposite to that of the Southern Hemisphere. If summer here, then the Southern Hemisphere will experience winter. Now, what happens when the Northern Hemisphere or particularly the North Pole dito is tilted to its full away from the sun? What will happen? Yes, very good. Absolutely, there will be winter season here, especially on the middle latitude of the Northern Hemisphere. Winter on the Northern Hemisphere starts on December 21 or 22. The North Pole, as you see here, is tilted to its full away from the sun. So this also refers to winter solstice. But the season in the Southern Hemisphere is opposite because, as you see here, the Southern Hemisphere receive lots of sunlight. So they are experiencing summer. So again, in this position class, this is the position wherein the North Pole is tilted farther away from the sun. That's why there will be winter solstice happens. In this time class, the Northern Hemisphere is experiencing the shortest daytime. Ang mahaba naman na ma-experience ng Northern Hemisphere ay gabi. Pero ang umaga or ang araw ay maikli lamang kapag ganito ang posisyon ng Earth towards the Sun. While in the Southern Hemisphere, the places here experience the longest daytime. Pinakamahabang araw naman ang kanilang ma-experience kapag ganito na ang position ng Earth towards the Sun. You notice, the Southern Hemisphere again receive a lot of sunlight. That is why they experience the longest daytime. Now, what happened when the axis is tilted neither toward or away from the sun? Is it possible that there is part of the year wherein the earth will receive equal amount of sunlight, maybe in the northern or the southern hemisphere? Is it possible? And when will it happen? When do you think? Yes, it is possible. Actually, twice a year, dalawang beses sa isang taon, may experience natin that the daylight and the night time are equal length. Again, twice a year, the daylight and the night time period are equal in length. And we call this as equinox. Equinoxes are moments when the daytime and the nighttime are equal in length. There will be time of the year wherein equal number of hours for daytime and nighttime will be experienced by all parts of the world. On March 21 class, the length of the day and night is equal. And this is called a spring or vernal equinox. There will be equinox also on September 23 since the day and the night time are again of equal length. And this is now called autumnal equinox. You see class, equinoxes happen when the sun is exactly above the planet's equator and during this time all parts of the earth north pole and south pole will receive equal amount of sunlight and equinoxes happens during march and september again class when the earth is on this part the northern hemisphere 
receive less sunlight compared to the southern hemisphere. So this is called the winter solstice, wherein the northern hemisphere experience the longest night time, while the southern hemisphere experience the shortest night time and the longest daytime. When the earth is in this position, any parts of the earth here will receive equal number of sunlight. That's why the nighttime and the daytime are in equal length. And this is called vernal or spring equinox. But when the earth is in this position, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So that's why the northern hemisphere will experience summer and the southern hemisphere here will experience winter. When the earth is in this position, we call this as summer solstice because the northern hemisphere has the shortest night time and the longest day time while the southern hemisphere here experience the longest night time and the shortest day time. Since southern hemisphere will receive less sunlight. And when the earth is placed in here during its revolution, another equinox will happen wherein there will be equal length for daytime and nighttime in all parts of the earth. And this is called autumnal equinox. In here, northern hemisphere will experience autumn and the southern hemisphere here will experience spring. I hope it's somewhat clear to you now what is this solstice and what is this equinox all about. Again, December 21 or 22, this position of the earth is called winter solstice. Winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. When the earth is positioned like this one, there will be vernal or spring equinox. Dated March 20 or March 21. This is the part of the year wherein number of daytime and nighttime are equal. Northern and Southern Hemisphere receive equal amount of sunlight. Spring in the Northern Hemisphere and Autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. Now when the Earth is in this position, another solstice will happen. Since Northern Hemisphere receive a lot of sunlight compared to Southern Hemisphere. When will this happen? On June 20 or 21, there will be summer solstice. Summer in the Northern Hemisphere and then winter in the Southern Hemisphere. When the Earth is positioned on this part, there will be another equinox. And this time, this will happen on September 22 or 23 and we call that as autumnal equinox. Equinox, again, because Northern and Southern Hemisphere will receive equal amount of sunlight. Northern Hemisphere will experience autumn and the Southern Hemisphere will experience spring season. And the cycle repeats every year. Understood? Now, question. Why can't we feel the Earth's rotation? Bakit hindi natin nararamdaman ang pag-ikot ng mundo? What do you think? Aha? Uh -huh. Now, different parts of the Earth experience different Earth rotational speed. Meaning, iba't ibang lugar dito sa Earth class makaka-experience ng iba't ibang rotational speed o yung bilis ng pag-ikot ng mundo. But, 
just like here in the Philippines, we are located near the equator. In the equator class, Earth rotates at a speed of about 1,700 km per hour. But, different speed will experience on this part of the Earth. No? In the in the pole, in the North Pole and in the South Pole. The poles have movement speed also, but it is almost nearly nothing. Now, knowing the rotational speed of Earth, especially on the equator part, is almost 1,700 kilometers per hour, but why can't we feel the rotation of the Earth? Bakit hindi pa rin natin maramdaman ang pag-ikot ng mundo? It is because we, including the Earth's ocean and atmosphere, are also spinning along with the Earth at the same constant speed. Just like when sitting in the bus, which is moving in the constant speed. We cannot feel it moving because you and everything inside the bus are moving along with the bus. That is, if the movement of the bus is in constant speed. Hindi nagbabago-bago ang kanyang takbo. Your motion is coupled with the motion of the bus. Mapapansin mo lang na gumagalaw ka kung tumitingin ka sa bintana ng bus. Also, mararamdaman mo lang na gumagalaw ka it's because there is sudden motion, like biglang pagpreno ng bus. So, mararamdaman mo yan. Or biglang matuli na pag-andar ng bus. Mararamdaman mo yan. Pero, again, as I said, if the bus is running in constant speed, hindi nagbabago-bago, just like Earth's rotation, which is in constant speed, we can feel the motion of the bus and also, we can feel the motion of the Earth while it is rotating. Now, what will happen if the Earth does not rotate or revolve around the Sun? Ano kaya ang mangyayari, class, kung hindi nagro-rotate or nagre-revolve ang Earth around the Sun? What do you think will happen to us here on Earth? Will it be the same? Pareho lang ba yung ma experience natin kung nagro-rotate or nagre-revolve ang Earth around the Sun? O hindi ito nagro-rotate at hindi ito nagre-revolve around the Sun? May pagkakaiba ba? Is there any difference? What do you think? If the Earth is not rotating or revolving, the portion of the Earth facing the Sun would always experience daytime, thus bringing continuous warmth to the region. Kung hindi nagre-revolve, hindi nagro-rotate ang mundo class, yung part ng mundo na nakaharap sa araw, makaka-experience lang lagi ng tag-init or daytime. So, ang mararamdaman nila, all the time would be warmth or init lang. There will be no changes in the weather. Kaya mo ba? Puro init lang ang mararamdaman mo, ang may experience mo every day. So that's it. No? That's one effect if the earth will not rotate or revolve. And the other part of the earth also class will remain in darkness and be freezing cold all the time. Part naman ng mundo na hindi nakaharap sa araw ay palaging madilim. At of course, makakaramdam sila ng napakalamig na panahon. So, if this will happen, kung puro init lang ang mararamdaman mo, puro lamig lang, at wala kang light and heat na marireceive from the, from the sun, then, life would not have been possible in these extreme conditions. 
malamang sa malamang, walang buhay dito sa mundo. Kasi walang makaka-survive in this kind of extreme conditions. So yan kahalaga class, ang pag-rotate at pag-revolve ng earth around the sun. Now what do you feel right now class, knowing the importance of rotation and revolution of the earth around the sun. Yes, that's correct. Now, you have to be grateful no? because rotation and revolution perhaps made life possible here on earth. Now, are you always grateful on all the things given to you? Yes, very good. You have to be grateful all the time, class, in all the blessings, in all the things that are given to you. Now, if you do this, what value are you showing? Yes, very good. The value of being gratefulness. When you talk about gratefulness, class, you are appreciative. You are always thankful in all the blessings, in all the things that given to you. So you have to possess this value all the time. Even in the little things that you are receiving every day. The food, the shelter, the clothing that you are enjoying every day. You have to be grateful for that. So, maswerte ka. Kasi nakakakain ka ng tatlong beses sa isang araw. May bahay ka na titirhan. May TV kayo sa bahay for you to be entertained every day and to gain more information. But other kids don't have that. So again, you have to appreciate, you have to be thankful, you have to be grateful in all the things that you have now. Surviving, living in the pandemic time is not so easy at all. I know it's also difficult on your part, no? studying distance learning, especially in our situation now. But then, we at Escalante Central Elementary School, your teachers are really trying our best to give you everything you need. And we make sure that you are still learning despite of our hard situation as of the moment. ECS teachers are also grateful that you are very participative. You are cooperative in all the tasks given to you. Thank you so much for your cooperation, participation in all the learning tasks that you need to comply. Now, now what is the difference between Earth's rotation and revolution? Yes, very good. Rotation refers to the movement of the Earth on its axis, while revolution is the movement of the Earth around the Sun. Now, can you please read all this together? Go! Rotation refers to the movement of the earth on its axis, while revolution is the movement of the earth around the sun. I hope this is clear to you now, the difference between rotation and revolution. Now, how will you describe the effects of earth's rotation and revolution? Ano yung mga epekto na dulot ng rotation at revolution class ng Earth around the Sun? Yes, very good. Earth's rotation causes day and night. Some more. Yes, very good. Earth's revolution causes the different seasons throughout the year in the different parts of the Earth. Some more. What do you think is the importance of uh, revolution and rotation of the earth. Yes, you're right. Perhaps earth's rotation and revolution makes life possible here on earth. Again, what are the effects of earth's rotation and revolution? Can you tell your parents there with you or any anybody who's with you now watching this video lesson? What are again the effects of Earth's rotation and revolution? Okay. Correct. Very good. Let us read all together. Go. Earth's rotation causes day and night. 
Earth's revolution causes different seasons throughout the year in the different parts of the Earth. Earth's rotation and revolution make life possible on Earth. Good job, everyone! I guess you are now ready to take your assessment. Here's the direction. Read each item carefully and write the letter of the correct answer in your answer sheet. You only have to write the letter only of your answer. This is a 10-item test and your time starts now. That's all for this week, class. Thank you so much for participating. Have a blessed week ahead. See you next week. Don't forget to stay home and be safe always.